sexual reproduction, budding in yeast. The production of offspring from a single parent is known as asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction occurs mostly in unicellular organisms such as bacteria, protozoa, etc. Plants like fungi, bryophyllum, etc. and certain multicellular animals like hydra. There are different modes of asexual reproduction such as fission, regeneration, vegetative propagation in plants, spore formation, budding. In this module, we will discuss about budding. In budding, a small part of the body of the parent organism grows out as a bud, which then detaches and becomes a new organism. The asexual reproduction by budding is observed in hydra and yeast. During this process, a bud develops as an outgrowth due to repeated cell divisions at one specific side. These buds develop into tiny individuals and when fully mature, they get detached from the parent body and become new independent individuals. Asexual Reproduction Vegetative Propagation Cutting There are many plants whose parts such as root, stem and leaves develop into new plants under appropriate conditions. Methods of vegetative propagation are cutting, layering, grafting, plant tissue culture. Cutting Small vegetative part of a plant removed by making a cut with gardening scissors is called a cutting. A cutting may be a piece of stem, root or even a leaf. While making a cut, care should be taken to see that there are some buds on it. Stem cutting is commonly used for propagation of grapes, rose, sugarcane, etc. In this method, a cutting of the parent plant, stem or shoot, having some buds on it is taken and its lower part is buried in the moist soil. After a few days, the cutting develops roots and grows into a new plant. Buds of potato and leaves of bryophyllum are also used as cutting. The new plant formed by cutting is exactly similar to the parent plant. Asexual Reproduction Vegetative Propagation Layering in this method, a branch of the plant is pulled towards the ground and a part of it is covered with moist soil, leaving the tip of the branch exposed above the ground. After some time, when new roots develop from the branch buried in the soil, branch is detached from the parent plant. Jasmine plant is propagated by layering method. Asexual reproduction Vegetative propagation Grafting Grafting In grafting, parts of two plants are joined in such a way that they grow as one plant. Grafting is done between the two closely related dicotyledonous plants. The part of the plant having roots is called the stalk. Stalk is generally the lower part of the plant. 
The other part of the plant which is grafted on the stalk is called scion. During grafting, about 4 to 12 inches long scion is placed on the cut end of the stalk and tied in such a way that the cambium, better understood as the vascular system of the two, come in contact with each other. The joint is covered with a layer of grafting wax or clay to check entry of air or pathogen. Asexual reproduction, vegetative propagation, plant tissue culture. It is a technique in which plant cells, tissue or any other part of the plant is grown on an artificial medium under controlled aseptic conditions. This technique is used in vegetative propagation of endangered, medicinally important and ornamental plants. Advantage of vegetative propagation Plants raised by vegetative propagation can bear flowers and fruits earlier than those produced from seeds. The method helps in propagation of plants which have lost the capacity to produce seeds such as banana, orange, rose, etc. The plants produced by this method are genetically similar enough to the parent plant and thus exhibit all its morphological characteristics. In this module, we will discuss reproduction in flowering plant. The reproductive parts of a flower containing the germ cells are Male reproductive part, stamen and the female reproductive part, carpal. Stamen is the male reproductive part that produces pollen grains which carry the male gamete and are yellowish in color. It consists of a filament and anther. Carpal is the female reproductive part and is present in the center of the flower. It is made up of three parts. The swollen bottom part is the ovary the middle elongated style and the terminal part, the stigma, which may be sticky. The ovary contains ovules and each ovule has an egg cell. This process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma is called pollination. Insects, flies, etc. help in transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. Reproduction in human beings C. During the sexual intercourse, male sperms enter the female body through the vaginal passage. They travel upwards and reach the oviduct where they may encounter the egg. The fusion of male and female sperms to form zygote is called fertilization. The fertilized egg, the zygote, gets implanted in the lining of the uterus and starts dividing. Hence the uterus prepares itself every month to receive and nurture the growing embryo. The lining thickens and is richly supplied with blood to nourish the growing embryo. The embryo gets nutrition from the mother's blood with the help of a special tissue called placenta. Placenta is a disc which is embedded in the uterine wall. It contains villi on the embryo side of the tissue. On the 
the mother's side are blood spaces which surround the villi. This provides a large surface area for glucose and oxygen to pass from the mother to the embryo. The developing embryo will also generate paste substances which can be removed by transferring them into the mother's blood through the placenta. The development of the child inside the mother's body takes approximately 9 months. The child is born as a result of rhythmic contractions of the muscles in the uterus. Reproduction in human beings Male Reproductive System The human male reproductive system consists of the following organs Testes Scrotum Vas deferens Urethra Penis The formation of germ cells Sperms takes place in the testes Testes are located outside the abdominal cavity in scrotum because sperm formation requires a lower temperature than the normal body temperature. The sperms are tiny bodies that consist of male genetic material and a long tail that helps them to move towards the female germ cell. The sperms formed are delivered through the vas deferens which unites with a tube coming from the urinary bladder. Along the path of the vas deferens, glands like the prostrate and the seminal vesicles add their secretions so that the sperms are now in a fluid which makes their transport easier and this fluid also provides nutrition. Human beings Female Reproduction System Female reproduction system is more complex as compared to that of male reproductive system. Female reproductive system consists of the following organs ovaries, fallopian tube, uterus, vagina. The female germ cells are called eggs. When a girl is born, the ovaries already contain thousands of immature eggs. On reaching puberty, some of these eggs start maturing. One egg is produced every month by one of these ovaries. The egg is then carried from the ovary to the womb through a thin oviduct or fallopian tube. The two oviducts unite into an elastic bag-like structure shown as the uterus. The uterus opens into the vagina through the cervix. Many fleet organisms have the ability to give rise to new individual organisms from their body parts. That is, if the individual is somehow cut or broken up into many pieces, many of these pieces grow into separate individuals. For example, simple animals like Hydra and Planaria can be cut into any number of pieces and each piece grows into a complete organism. This is known as regeneration. Regeneration is carried out by specialized cells. These cells proliferate and make large number of cells. From this mass of cells, Different cells undergo changes to become various cell types and tissues. These changes take place in an organized sequence referred to as development. 
However, regeneration is not the same as reproduction. Since most organisms would not normally depend on being cut up to be able to reproduce. Fragmentation In multicellular organisms with relatively simple body organization, simple reproductive methods can still work. Spirogyra, for example, simply breaks up into smaller pieces upon maturation. These pieces or fragments grow into new individuals. This is known as fragmentation. This is not true for all multicellular organisms. They cannot simply divide cell by cell. The reason is that many multicellular organisms, as we have seen, are not simply a random collection of cells. Specialized cells are organized as tissues, and tissues are organized into organs, which have then to be placed at definite positions in the body. In such a carefully organized situation, cell-by-cell -cell division would be impractical. Multicellular organisms, therefore, need to use more complex ways of reproduction. A basic strategy used in multicellular organisms is that different cell types perform different specialized functions. Following this general pattern, reproduction in such type of organisms is also the function of a specific cell type. How is reproduction to be achieved from a single cell type if the organism itself consists of many cell types? The answer is that there must be a single cell type the organism that is capable of growing, proliferating and making other cell types under the right circumstances.